ceramic coat delta textile medium. Um, this is a, I believe this is an eight ounce bottle. It's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to $15, depending on where you get it. You can certainly look on Amazon. That is my commercial recommendation. However, I do make my own. This is my pearlescent. Uh, and that reason alone is one of the reasons I started making it. I like to see things shimmer. And if you all have ever seen my work, you know that that's a, a, a very important part of what makes my art. However, I also make a plain version of my fabric medium. Okay, now here's another tip. Um, and this actually involves the pencil sharpener that I was just speaking about um, when trying to get your pencils as nice as sharp as possible in order to do those berries that were up here. All right, I'm covering them up and I wanna focus now on this one down here. Now, just what we learned is that you can dip your pencil directly into the fabric medium and you can come in and color and then blend with your brush. But what if you want to do all of these, um, but you don't want to have to keep pencil sharpening with every single uh, petal in order to keep the pencil sharp. Here's another way to be able to color small areas um, and, and try to stay within the lines. Um, but let's, a quick word about pencil sharpeners. Now, you can get a fancy doodah one like this from Faber-Castell, and I'm gonna turn this, and you can see, um, there is the pencil sharpener. Uh, it falls, the stuff falls in here, and then you can clean it and you can use either side. Great, I don't know how much I paid for this one. It was probably somewhere under $10. Um, and they're good, they're very good. But back to the basics. This is still my all time favorite. Um, you of course can buy these anywhere, truly anywhere. Um, from the grocery store to Walmart to any art supply store. So I'm going to take the pencil that we were using on this one and I'm going to put it in the pencil sharpener. Now I'm going to hold it over my little paint pot right there. And I'm just going to very slowly, in fact, maybe I'll turn it a little bit more so these fall directly into the little cup Ah, wow, that's great. Got a really nice bit of color there. In fact, probably way, way, way more than I need. The beauty about Inktense pencils is that they are very, very, very concentrate. Um, so what I'm going to do here, you might be able to see that there is a bit of the wood. Uh, you do wanna to try to remove that. Let's see if I can just pull this off. This is typically what I'm, I do with this, is that I just kind of grab a bit of that wood and pull it away, and then take that piece of wood and dispose of it, and preferably in the garbage. Don't leave it out. It will come back to haunt you if it still has any of the, of the color on it. All right, so now we have our color in here. And what you're going to do is you're gonna take your fabric medium and you're going to give it a good shake. If it's my pearlescent, if not, you can just pour directly and pour it directly in on top of your color flakes. Um, get about a dime's worth to start out with. You can do this two ways. You can sit and let it melt for about 10 to 15 minutes, or if you're impatient like I am, you can take one of your grody brushes um, this, the grody brushes do have a, by the way, it's a very official term. <laughs> and use one of your grody brushes to start just stirring. And as you can probably see, you're going to immediately see the color start melting in the fabric medium. Uh, I love this. This has to be one of my all time favorite tricks. Um, this is effectively creating paint with ink tense pencils. Uh, you can do this actually with watercolor pencils too. You cannot do this with colored pencils. So just be aware the limitations of the wax and a colored pencil will not allow you to do this, but you can certainly um, 
do this with ink tense pencils and watercolor pencils with no problem. And I'm just tickled pink with that color. Uh, really looks good. Uh, now there's a bit of color right there. I'm just gonna actually pull that out. Um, you could actually save it for later. Uh, but what you really wanna make sure that you've done is that you have mixed all the little particles together or pulled out any of the big chunks like I did so that you don't accidentally get it on your work and all of a sudden you've got this huge blob um, and then it ends up ruining your work because it just kind of makes a big blob all over your work. I have no other technical term to say but that. All right, now that I've mixed up my paint, just come in here and dip your brush in um, since I've already started on the outside petals, I'll come in and start applying it to my next row of petals. And as you can see, we're getting a very nice, lighter look than the first row that I created with a very dark. Um, just continue that all the way around. Again, I will probably not talk and I'll put, speed this up so that you can see this. Okay, so I've got that first row down. Now what I wanna do is as I work progressively towards the center, I wanna lighten this color up a little bit more. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a bit of my color and put it over here. Then once again, grab my fabric medium, add a couple of more drops to it, and stir. Now what you're going to see is the color became lighter. So let's go forth and use this color now. So I'm gonna interrupt myself here. I did end up getting a bit of color right there. So it's called creative opportunity, everyone. When you have something like that happen, just try to work it out. And notice that I actually went ahead on some of those outside petals and made them darker. Kind of fits with some of these that are, that are over here. <clears throat> this will happen with ink tense pencil. That's why you have to be very careful and blend this down as much as possible. I'm going to leave this center blank for the time being. I actually think I want a yellow in there. Uh, to me, these look like zinnias. Now, I know that not everybody out there knows their flowers. Uh, let me just say that a zinnia does, does look like this, um, but it's not necessary to know what a zinnia is in my instructions, hopefully you will just follow wherever I have the number that's associated with this particular color. Now these last ones I did leave blank. Um, do you see this dark piece? Let me get this into the camera. This dark piece that we had, um, I'm actually going to try to just pull off really some very dark color off of it and come in and try to get, ah, perfect. Look at that, that really nice color. So what we're doing here is we're just, we're just using different gradations of color to achieve a, a, a light and dark look without having to use multiple different colors to do so. Uh, so this is to, again, the beauty in my mind of Ink Tense Pencil is being able to come in and vary the color in, in its tone and its tint and makes you look like an artist without having to be one. And, and so you see that, that, was, that, was, that was pretty easy, not very hard at all. Now, some people would say, well, what about some of these white spots? Great, if the white spots bother you, come in with some clear fabric medium, use it to kind of blend the other color around. Um, it doesn't bother me. To me, it's kind of an artsy fartsy look, um, but if it really bothers you, just use some tinted fabric medium or just plain fabric medium and blend. So there you go. That is actually how to use color without being able to, to, to buy a paint or um, uh, buy additional types of fabric tools. 
you can create your own paint.